actually be child born, right? But what happens is it gets pinned to them, like pin the donkey, okay? or pin the tail of the donkey. So, and then through our lives we act for the birth certificate. Now, with regards to what you're asking, is it what happens when a man or woman dies, or what happens when a person dies? The death is registered, and then the birth certificate, which is the paperwork side of it, would be extinguished. Something for you to consider. If you're thinking about it, the death of the birth certificate. <coughs> Purely administration. Doesn't mean the death of the man or woman. It's purely an, an administrative process. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're suggesting I could have a fictitious death? <coughs> You've only got a fictitious life. Remember, the birth certificate is not the body. It's only attached, like pin the donkey. Mm. But it's also being used inappropriately, so if it's done. Essentially, it ties you into a fraudulent agreement, which once you know it's fraud, you can undo it because it because it is fraudulent. It's like I as a parent signed my child into the system, I gave away the child willingly because I didn't know what I, what I was getting myself into. The trick is to, to recognise what the trick is and then let them know that you know and say, I'm, I'm not good with this, I'm opting out of this, I'm removing any previous assumptions, presumptions of contrast yeah. the issue. You don't actually tell them. Yeah. You don't ask them, you don't ask them. You go to tell them, so, so I just want to know. Have you done it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a I'll true... I'll take out the loan of academic agreement. Okay. There's, a, there's a true story um, that uh, reveals exactly um, how this pans out. So there's a woman who had a visit and they took all four of her kids and the next day they brought one back and she said what's going on she said uh, the social worker said this one's yours it's the only one that, that hadn't been registered but what could she have done for the other three and the answer is empower herself and keep the door shut because the question i always ask is how did they get in so there's always remedy, it's, it's much easier to prevent the problem by not registering. Okay, but once you've registered, then you, your consciousness and your level of empowerment trumps all their paperwork. Right, because as Dean is rightly saying, they're in the land of the, of the dead, paperwork two-dimensional. Once you know you're, that you're in a different realm, then all you have to do is act upon that knowing, and they're gone, they're toast. And they, they've also got a clause called Law Shula Faithless Fixed Status, which is, um, I think in, in law it means that if you understand that you've entered into a contract and new evidence comes to light, then it nullifies the original contract. So that's even within their own tricks and turns and chicanery, that clause is a contractual clause which, once you realise that you weren't fully conversant with everything, Clausula, Clausula, Rebus, Rebus, and then Sic, S I C, and Stantibus, S T A N T I B U S. So the, the other thing as well, that Anna von Rice has confirmed, yeah, that any, any contract is unravelled if there's fraud. Any contract, any contract at all. So it doesn't matter how old that contract is, you can go back centuries and unravel it all. All the documents we have that they've given us are fake fraud. So they use Bob Latin, the American uh, style of philosophy, languages, and, and, uh, and um, American sign language, and they're mixing from the Justinian deception from Emperor Justinian from 700 years ago. That's now made our documents. It's all fraud. Everything is all fraud. So we're going to unravel all of it, we're going to unravel the legislation as well. We're just done with it. Let's just be done with it. We don't need to shit anymore. We don't need to worry about the, the intricacies. They've got hundreds of thousands of acts and statutes and everything else. We just don't need it. Because the bar society, by the way, is 
already had Dean's Trust in it, and upon like the Dean's Trust for those and all the major corporations, any other corporation involved in this evil. And that's also been going back to them, all that, that the claims are all going back against them. The US has 60 million pounds. 60, 60 million pounds. All called law. Yes. They're not law. But they're not law, they're just negotiable instruments. It's finance, it's corporate finance, it's asset stripping and asset brokerage and credit brokerage. So, the other example of uh, fraud going on. So, my birth certificate I've got with me today um, has first name and then family name, I think. And my driving license, in tiny writing on the back, has the field numbers. First one is one name, second one, first name. Right? They're different, like, the yeah, fields yeah. are all different. And the name, it's got Geddes in capitals, so that's not my name. Yeah. Right? yeah. And secondly, under number two, uh, it's got Mr. Martin Royce. Well, that's a type, that's not the title. Title, right? Yeah. 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 So this has nothing to do with even my birth certificate, which is the group identical to me. Yeah. So it's, this is nothing. It's like, yeah. 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 So you need your passport. Paper. If you do it online, we need your passport, for example, and you put it in proper case, capital letter and lower case, capital letter and lower case. You can video it, you can photograph it, whatever you want. When it comes back, it comes back in capital letters. This proof is called straight there. Right. If you ask, if you write to the BBA, I'll correct it, saying this is not a proper name, do I do it? Yeah, well, fraud. So yes. if you you were never registered, never got a birth certificate, so in fact you, you could be on this planet in, living incognito, if I understand that. Living a normal life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Living so a normal in fact life. you only exist to yourself and your loved ones. Who else, you need, who else needs to know that you exist? So we, yeah. registration, no, saying, no. like, registr registration is giving away your title and, 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 and your rights. And, and, and your mm -hmm. rights because you're now contracting with an entity you don't even know anything about necessarily. What they used to do is that the family would you record the birth. So I have no problem with recording things because records help us know where we are. But they don't have to register, they don't have to give away any of my power no, to do that. Agree, agree. You don't have to give away your children to do that. Yeah, exactly. And the state can't come and take them either. Yeah. So it's about different between status from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so when you record something, your status stays the same. Correct. But when you register, your status stays the same. That's correct. Yes, definitely. So no, no more questions. We can be up to ask questions. And if, if not, we'll move on to maybe what Steve will want. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. Change the order. We've changed the order. Yeah. And also, I think you want to leave something out in front of you. Yeah, let's lighten it up a bit. Yeah, don't feel like that. This is a bit like flashing here, right? So, this is short, the third of five letters I wrote to my dear friend at TV licensing, right? And it's to, to highlight the principle that whoever's having the most fun wins. Um, so, this is 20, 31st October, 22, right? Dear Sir Madam, I note your automated, undated letter that I received on the 28th of October. I appreciate the courtesy of Jackie Garswood putting a name to it, unwise as it may be, given we are dealing with a potentially criminal matters of malicious communications and blackmail. As per my notices to you on date and date, I have requested that you cease writing to me while offering you the alternative to engage in a contract for correspondence services. I am a professional writer, and I am happy to provide you with custom souvenir letters, that was <laughs> if that is what you decide. We formed a contract by your choice to ignore my request to insist in communicating with me, instead continuing to fill my letter box with unwanted envelopes. Consider it public service prose, if you wish. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, my letters may be valued collector's items in the future, future, you have forced me to respond to you once again. You have sent a no license needed confirmation that makes a, an assertion that I have claimed or confirmed that I do not need a TV license. I have purposely not done this, since this is a matter of me asserting my constitutional and human rights to privacy in my home, freedom to contract, and presumption of innocence. This claim is purely of your own volition, and I make no comment upon its veracity or in any way or form. I am under no lawful obligation to make any declaration to you whatsoever, nor to contract with you for your services. In order for me not to be presumed in agreement with your assertion, which you need not have made, I'm having to send you this further missive under our correspondence contract. You have once again ignored my original request saying you may write to me uh, you know, request saying you may write to me after two years. 
I remind you that you are welcome to do so, but only under the terms of our contract for premium professional correspondence services from myself. <laughs> Otherwise, it constitutes criminal harassment. I prefer you cease communications permanently, barring invoice payment. You have failed to acknowledge my original and legitimate request to desist, as well as our contract for correspondence services, plus my previous invoice. They are all completely lawful, and I am sure you are a law-abiding organisation. I hereby give you free action notification to pay my invoice on 15th of October, which is now overdue. You will prefer the seven days to pay before recovery action is taken. The good news is that you may find willing buyers for rare, signed, one-off, original Martin Geller's work at prices well above that which you yourselves have paid. It is exceptional value for money. Although I don't wish to encourage you to overindulge at these generous rates. <laughs> <laughs> I have also proposed a new invoice for £750 to reflect my correspondence services and their value to you and the world at large. I trust that you appreciate my writing work every bit as much as I respect public service broadcasting in the UK. <laughs> It's actually really crucial work. Um, he is a guardian and protector of the children. And during COVID, he was uh, an amazing bastion of strength for a lot of us who gave us the, a way in which to say to the teachers and to the teaching profession, these are our children, they are sovereign beings, you are not allowed to do anything to them. It is harmless. And those who do an incredible work. Um, I thoroughly recommend this book, it's on my shelf at home, and Dave's going to go through a way in which you can keep your children and your grandchildren safe from potential terror. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to look at this card now. I'm going to walk you through it. Um, so it's called the School Protection Card. The ultimate aim, really, uh, my ultimate aim, my remit, is to encourage uh, Grandparents and parents, unfortunately, I'm only, I'm not, I tend to be meeting just the grandparents, but they the are the parents. Get the boys and girls out of school now, like yesterday. No questions asked, just get them out. Now, why is it so urgent? Well, the reason why it's so urgent is because another lockdown is imminent, and you've no idea how dangerous that could be to boys and girls, you know, because they might be offered a nasal spray or a jam while they're in lockdown, or you can come back out uh, as long as we, we make you safe. You know, you don't want to kill your parents or your granny. You know the, you know the drill, because they did a version of it in the dress rehearsal known as COVID, which was just a beta test of compliance. But the main pandemic we haven't had yet, because it will actually be a real pandemic, because we've got deaths from the original jabs, suicides, despair, you name it. You know, you can take, you only have to walk around and look at people's faces. They're still in a pandemic. They're still in a pandemic. So when they press the button for the next one, they'll just, oh, not again, they'll just, you know. So if for some reason, you, by the way, who's got, who knows someone um, who is still in school? Who personally knows someone still in school? So not many, uh, oh, all right, you know, okay, good. If you don't know anyone uh, in, who's in school, then make sure that their parents or grandparents get um, a hold of this. You can 